So last summer in 2021, I took a trip across the country and stopped into a really cool music shop there called Grayson's Toontown, and I walked away with an Epiphone Les Paul Modern. When I got back, I told my barber, um, who has been cutting my hair for 36 years, about my Epiphone, and he turned to me and said, oh, I have an Epiphone. A few months later, he finally dug it out, I opened up the case, and this beauty was inside. Now, it has seen some battle damage over the years. When Glenn entrusted it to me to get it back in playing condition, the fingerboard was so dried out it was actually scalloped, but with very minimal care, and I do not claim to be a luthier by any stretch of the imagination, with a little bit of care, some very minor adjustments, this guitar is playing as well as any modern guitar that I have that has been set up over the years. In 1940, Gibson Guitars decided that they needed a new logo to spice things up and attract players to their brand, and thus the slogan, Only a Gibson is Good Enough, was born. They believed in their new slogan so much that all guitars that rolled off the production line had the phrase, Only a Gibson is Good Enough, painted on them. That is, until their main rival, a guitar builder in New York City by the name of Epiphone, developed their new slogan, when good enough simply isn't good enough. And many players agree that when it comes to guitars of this era, Epiphones are the better brand. So let's talk about the Archtop. Archtops have kind of fallen out of favor with players today, but there was a time when this was the working musician's guitar of choice. Archtops were designed in the tradition of classic instruments such as violins, violas, and cellos, with the F-hole design and a lack of internal bracing, which luthiers of the day believed robbed the guitar of its natural internal tone. And while they're not the most resonant guitars, they are bright and articulate in a way that most acoustic guitars are not. I can't tell you how amazing it is to be holding an 80-year-old guitar and picking away on it. And it's unlike any guitar that I have. The neck is incredibly fast, it's comfortable, it is wide but thin. But there is something that's kind of bizarre about this guitar. For a hollow body arch top, this thing comes in at close to 11 pounds because, as you can see, it is mounted with a pickup inside. This is one of the first electric guitars that ever rolled off the line anywhere. Um, in the late 1930s, early 1940s, we began to start seeing electric guitars, and this bears the pickup of one Benjamin Franklin Meisner of Meisner Inventions. Benjamin Franklin Meisner is relatively unknown in American history, but he and his brother and his company gave us much of the early radio technology that we take for granted. In fact, RCA purchased over 150 patents from Meisner and Meisner Inventions, which actually gave him the capital to expand and grow his company. Now, it's unclear who developed it first, but Meisner was involved in an early pickup design that Rickenbacker uses to this day, the horseshoe. Over the course of a long legal battle, which saw Meisner actually suing the United States Supreme Court for charging him an appeals fee, he eventually had to cease and desist using that design and perhaps invented one of the first blade-style pickups that has ever been put in a guitar. Now, 80 years, wire degradation, and just the march of time has rendered this pickup largely 
unusable today. That's okay because it still plays and sounds fantastic. The archtop began its run as popular instrument right at the turn of the 20th century, and it remains in production today, largely unchanged from those early designs that rolled off of guitar manufacturers like Gibson, Epiphone, D'Angelico, Gretsch, and that sound largely defined the big band era of music and early rock and roll, blues, and rockabilly. This is a beautiful instrument. Glenn, thank you so much for trusting its care in my hands. As I said, I'm not a luthier by any stretch of the imagination. Some people spent pandemic learning how to brew beer, bake bread. I taught myself just to keep my guitars playing well when I couldn't get them in the hands of people who uh, are much more skilled at this work than I am. This has nothing to do with the kind of stuff that I usually talk about in my videos and courses, but I love giving new life to old things so that people can continue to make amazing memories uh, and get use out of these amazing, well-made, beautifully crafted instruments that with a little lemon oil and an Allen wrench will hopefully have another 80 years of play left in it. Until next time, I am Justin Mara. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to click the bell, subscribe, like, all of that stuff because that's the world that we live in. And remember to think scrappy, be brave, and I will see you next time.